Okay, so now um, we're on our second assignment, and it is going to be on 1.1. We're calling this 1.1b. So I know this just says 1.1, but we're going to call it 1.1b. We're going to be solving one-step equations. All right, so you need to be on page 5 of your notes. This is Wednesday night, okay? All right, so it says the objective is to get the variable, which is x, all by itself on one side of the equal sign. That's our always our goal, okay? So rule number one is to get rid of something added to your x. Your x has to be alone and all by itself. If something is being added to it, you have to do the opposite. And that means you have to do what? Subtract. So if, some, if, if something is to get rid of something added to your x, you subtract it away. So always do the same thing to both sides of the equal sign. You have, we call it being fair. You can't do one thing on one side without doing it on the other side. All right, this is super important. So what I want you guys to do for all of these examples is I want you to draw a line at the equal sign. That means you see both sides so that you know that you're doing whatever you do on this side, you do on this side as well. So we're solving for x. We have to get x by itself. And to do that, we have to say, well, what is happening to x? Well, 6 is being added to it. So what's the opposite of 6? Subtraction. We're going to subtract 6 from both sides, okay? So when you do this, you get 6 minus 6 is 0. And over here, 20 minus 6 is 14, right? So this cancels out. We don't have to write 0. We can just say x equals 14. That's your answer. Now, you guys should know that there's always a way to check your answers to see if you're right. You plug in whatever you get for x. So here we got 14 as x. If we were to plug 14 in where there is an x, because we just found out that 14 is x is 14. If we were to substitute that in for x, 14, would this statement be true? Is 14 plus 6 20? Yes. So it's correct. Okay, let's do this next one. All right, so example number two, something is being added to the x. How do we get this off of the x? How do we get this 21 off the x? We need to add the x by itself. Something's being added, so we're going to subtract 21 from both sides. Okay, we have to do it on both sides. So 21 minus 21, that gives us 0. It cancels that out. We're only left with an x on this side. 15 minus 21, that's going to give you a negative 6. If you're needing help with your positive and negative numbers and adding and subtracting those, um, you're going to need to make sure that you stop the video and figure out that how did we get negative 6. Okay, it's because negative 20, minus 21 is going to bring you to the negatives. You only had 15 to work with. Okay, number three, example three is a little bit tougher. We have our variable on the right side now. No different. We have to get the two. We have to get the x by itself, and we see here that two thirds is being added to it. So we don't need to worry about that. That's a fraction. We don't need to be scared of it. We're going to subtract two thirds from both sides. Okay. So two-thirds minus two-thirds, that equals zero, that cancels out. All you're left with here is just an x. And you do four minus two-thirds. Okay. So you can do this, and this is what you're going to be doing. Okay, you have to do negative four minus two-thirds. You have to put this four into a fraction. We can put a 1 over it and it becomes a fraction. 
But remember your subtraction rules with fractions. You can't just say 4 minus 2 and then 1 minus 3. Okay? You have to do, you have to find a common denominator. So we have to make this something over 3. So 4 times 3 is 12. How could we make this something over 3? All right, we're going to go with a common denominator of 3. We're going to keep that 3 as our common denominator. And negative 2 thirds is one side, right? So negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, right? So negative 12 over 3 is the same thing as negative 4 over 1. Do you see that? Negative 12 over 3 is the same thing as negative 4 over 1. We could simplify this fraction to equal this. So now we have the same denominator. We can follow regular subtraction rules. Negative 12 minus 2 is the same thing as plus the opposite. And so it becomes, you're adding two negatives together. Ah. And you keep that same denominator. 14 thirds is your x. Okay, now that one was a little tricky. That's okay. Let's look at this last one. All right, so on this one, you have to see what is being, how do we get this x by itself? Well, we're subtracting x. So we haven't talked about this, but what is the opposite of subtraction? Addition. So we're going to add 6 to both sides to get this 6 off. That cancels. Negative 6 and a positive 6 is 0. And then 17 plus 6, that's going to give you 24. Okay, sorry, 23. <laughs> uh, sometimes I add wrong. Sorry. I make mistakes too. 23. Now, Again, let me show you the check method. You can do this anytime. 23 minus 6 equals 17. What I did here is I took 23 because we said x equals 23 and I added it here. And I, I subtract, I mean, I substitute 23 for x. So 23 minus 6 is 17. That's a true statement. It checks out. Okay, rule number two to get rid of something multiplied to your x, what we have to do the opposite. What is the opposite of multiplication? Division. So you're going to divide it away. Divide it away. So we always do the same thing to both sides. We have to be fair of the equal sign of the equation. So we're not going to do all of these examples, but let's go ahead and do some of them. We want to get x by itself. We see here this is multiplication, so we have to do the opposite. We're going to divide by 3 to get that 3 off of the x. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so now we're just left with 1x or x. 30 divided by 3 is 10. Just like before, we can check ourselves. We can, whatever we get for our answer, we can substitute back in for x. Is that correct? Yes. 3 times 10 is 30. Check. Okay, let's look at number 8. I'm going to skip down here. Negative 2 is being multiplied to the x, so to get the x by itself, we have to divide by negative 2. We get x equals negative 7. We can substitute negative 7 in to check it. Negative 2 times negative 7 equals 14. All I did was I just plugged this 7 in, negative 7 in for the x. And does that check out? Negative 2 times negative 7, does that equal 14? Yes, it does. Okay, let's do number 11. 40x equals 4. Okay, so now we have 40 as attached to the x by multiplication, so we're going to divide both sides by 40. I'm sorry, I meant to draw your lines. You need to do that so that you can see the different sides. 
Okay, well here this leaves us just with x, because 40 divided by 40 cancels out, equals 4 divided by 40. Now, you always, always simplify any fraction in your answers. So 4 over 40, that's not reduced to the, it's not reduced yet. 4 will go into 4 one time, and 4 will also go into 40 10 times. So 1 tenth is your answer. All right, let's look at the next page. This kind of is a review on what we did yesterday. Let's look at number 14. 6 less than a number is 47. So less than a number, less than a number, if we go back to our chart here, less than a number, uh, less than is a turnaround word right here. So we're going to put the number first. It's backwards. Turn around, okay? Go backwards. 47 minus 6 is, that means equals, oh man, is 47. I'm sorry. It's a, less than a number. Okay, a number, we're going to call it n. You can call it x, any variable. So let me rewrite this. n minus 6 equals 47. I jumped ahead and went too fast is 47 equals is the same is what you, you should say e equals 47 because is it's the same thing as equals okay number 16 triple a number triple a number okay and then we have is we know that's going to equal 6 over 7 because that is means equal Let's look at our chart do we have anything about tripling a number Okay, we don't, but we do have something that says double. So, triple would fall in the same thing as multiplication. Like double, triple, quadruple. So, triple means three times, right? Three times a number, we'll say X is our number. You could say N, you could say Y, whatever. Equals 6 over 7. Okay, now, I want you to take this further. These two. I want you to take these two further, and now I want you to solve for the number. That means we're going to solve for the variable. So over here, we say, what is, we need to get this n by itself. So what is being added or subtracted to the n? Well, 6 is being subtracted. So we're going to add 6 to both sides. And that gives us n equals 47 plus 6 is what? 53. That's really the ultimate answer there, because it asks, what is the number? The number is 53. So down here, now we're going to solve for this one. We're going to solve for x. So we say, what is being, what is attaching the number to the x? We have to get this x by itself. What's multiplication? So we're going to divide both sides by 3, right? So this cancels out. And you get x equals, right? Now, here's the weird thing. You have a fraction divided by 3. Okay? You can't have a fraction as a numerator of a, of, a, of a problem. So, you have to think about your division rules for fractions. I don't know if you've ever heard this jingle, but this is what I like to say. When dividing two fractions, don't ask why, you flip the second one, second fraction, and multiply. Dividing two fractions, don't ask why, just flip the second and multiply. Because what you're really saying here is um, 6 over 7 divided by 1 over, divided by 3 over 1, right? Because 3 is 3 over 1, same thing. So you can put both of these in fraction form, and you flip the second fraction. So if you're doing this, 6 over 7 divided by 3 over 1. Right, that's what we're doing there. We have to flip this second fraction and then multiply. So this becomes 6 over 7 times 1 over 3. And then you just do top times top is 6, 6 times 6, 6 times 1 is 6, bottom times bottom is 21. All right, we can't stop there. That's not reduced. 
What number will go into both 6 and 21? I hope you're saying 3. If you are, you're right. 3 will go into uh, 6 2 times, and 3 will go into 21 7 times. So that's actually your answer. Whew, that was a good one, huh? Okay, so we're going to stop there for tonight. And uh, bring these notes to class tomorrow, and we're going to work on 1.1b homework in class tomorrow. Have a great night.